I've made my way north from California this week to meet up with fellow off-road YouTuber Nate from Dirt Lifestyle. We're heading out to explore his home turf of Washington State and all of the Pacific Northwest weather that comes along with it. Forecast, snow. This is the story till now. Brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. White Rock Dodge. Rip Superchargers. Modular Racks. Toyo Tires. And in part by... We're picking up right where we left off last week on our trip, in Alabama Hills, California. We're getting up for an early start at sunrise for our drive north. to Washington. We met up with Nate from Dirt Lifestyle. Howdy. And we are going to head out on an adventure today, do a little camping, do a little exploring. Should be a good time. Enjoying new hats from DirtyAndDangerous.com. <laughs> Just a slight difference in environment from uh, the California desert to being out here in the snow. A little cooler, but uh, very Canadian. we're very Canadian, so we're getting used to it. Yeah. The ginger's got to take off pretty soon. He's going to drive with us on the highway for a bit, but then he's got to head back because he's got a new puppy to, to see to at home. Yep. He's a dog dad now. I left town for nine days. I got replaced by a dog. It happens. Well, we're making killer time over the pass. We'll be uh, getting to our turn here pretty quick. Perfect. All time on the trail, this time up. Yep. All right, we just got to the bottom of the trail here. Already quite a bit of snow on the road, so we're gonna air down pretty low. Get that little bit of extra traction. I'm having problem with my lock problems. I'm having problems with my lockers. Your talkers. And my talkers. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna air down pretty low, and then I imagine as we get up into the mountains here, it's gonna get deep. So it's already pretty deep. It's already pretty this deep. This is a paved road. <laughs> yeah, there's actually pavement under here, so this <laughs> yeah. should prove interesting. For sure. <laughs> Nate's got the uh, the disco out here, which is an amazing rig. This thing is so big in person. We'll take a look at that when we get to camp, I think, and uh, maybe have Nate give us a little walk around for you guys. The plan for today is pure exploration. The snow is already a bit deep at the start of the trail, so things could get interesting. I've been driving so much every day for the last uh, week that I've, got, I've developed a blister on my, my thumb. 
the wheel and blister. It's an adventure blister, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's a badge of honor, I guess. This is about the crappiest snow I've ever been in. It's like hard packed underneath with like a one inch layer of just slippery on top of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, you're just staying on top of the crust there. Well, that's good news. Is uh, when we're as heavy as my rig and your rig, staying on top and not falling through things is a rarity. Yeah, your pressure in your uh, rear driver tires looks like much lower than the other one. It might actually be too. I don't know. And just as we were talking about how Nate's tire looked a little low. Well, time to change the tire. Brutal. I think you uh, might have aired down a little too low for the snow buddy. You know, I wanted to give it a test. I um, Last weekend, I was testing my method uh, bead grip wheels, and I had them close to the same pressure in the snow, and I didn't have any problems, and so I aired down really low today to see with non-bead grip, am I gonna have problems? We got, we got our answer. <laughs> I'm gonna jack it up and see. I mean, if the if the bead gets close to where it's supposed to seat, yeah. then I might just try airing it up and see if it'll reseat, so we'll see. We're having some jack issues. Non-functioning <laughs> jacks. The whole reason I carry a bottlenose jack is because of reliability. It's dead reliable. It decides to be unreliable. By stacking a bunch of max tracks, jack it up. Pull the max tracks, and then maybe dig with the max tracks. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking people. Idea men, you might say. Idea men. Put a jack on a jack? Jacks on jacks. We might put a tear in space time if we do that. <laughs> we gotta call up uh, exhibit, right? Yeah. I heard you like jacks. We put a jack on your jack. I've got other rigs that I keep like chunks of wood in. What? We do have chunks of wood in that. We'll use nature. Nature will help us. <laughs> Thank you, nature. Never question the gauge. It doesn't look like triple PSI. That can't be two PSI. That can't be two PSI. <laughs> My son calls this the poop shovel. Dude, listen to how hard that snow is. Oh no. Did that just happen? That definitely just happened. Dude, there you go from under there. <laughs> That's it. Boom. Woo! There it is. Speed's receded. Wheels going back on. We're going to be mobile here in a moment. With our tire situation resolved, we carried on and started climbing further up the mountain. And as we did, the snow was getting more and more challenging. Looks like I'm gonna have to start using lockers. It's getting sloppy up here. getting deeper and slimier as we get further up into the mountains here. I'm starting to see a lot more signs of struggle in front of me where people are clearly getting stuck. Like right here. I'm, oh, I'm falling into their rut.
Uh oh. Just as Nate was starting to get stuck, I was also stuck just behind him. I think we're turning around, is what I think. We got and turned around and found a short trail down to the river that would make for a great campsite. Oh, this looks lovely. Yeah. on this nice riverside camp spot so we're going to set up camp here get a nice fire going warm up after all that snow wheeling get some grub going maybe All right guys, it's morning here at our Riverside camp. We're gonna start getting packed up here, but before we do, I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a look at this crazy rig that Nate has, the Land Rover Discovery. It wasn't stock when I got it, it had a slight lift. I don't even know who from, but it was stock axles and it had some stuff done. And so what I did is I, I rebuilt some of it that I didn't like. The front bumper was actually pretty close to what it is now. I just add, I just cleaned some things up, so that was already there. Pretty much everything else aside from that, I built from scratch. So. Uh, I put one ton axles under it. The front's a custom Dana 60 from Fusion 4x4. The rear's a Sterling 10 and a half out of a F350. Went a little nuts with it. I wanted a reliable, really strong, somewhat unbreakable overland rig for long trips, and uh, this is so far fitting the bill pretty well. I wanted to keep things simple, so and slim and light and whatnot. So I just have like, everything just kind of drops out of the door or like I created a little tabletop for the back here. I built the slide and whatnot for the fridge and drawers and all that other stuff. And then I built some gold wing wind windows for the sides. Because of the way the organizer's set up, it's like I can shove a bunch of stuff like from down here all the way up. So it just helps you like really organize your gear. Not as well organized as his is that red arc window is incredible that's the only thing organized on my yeah truck. this fairly it was an idea that i came up with and worked with in partnership with yankum ropes on it and they actually designed and developed the product it's literally just the end of a loop that ties onto the side to like really make it to where you can bury that uh rope like into it keep it away from rocks and obstacles and stuff like that but pretty happy with it so far it works <laughs> there's a couple big holes here uh that it wanted to pull me into, so this might be a little interesting getting out with we'll the
It's a few days later, and we've met up with Nate's brother Matt and moved to a new area to explore on Olympic Peninsula. Nate, you're going down to 2 PSI, right? Oh, yeah, That's for sure. I'm going to do 14 this time. Quite a bit more than two. Yeah. You bring ice skates or no? No, uh, not this trip. Toboggan? Yeah, I try to do one hobby at a time. You guys don't carry toboggan in your, in your vehicles down here? <laughs> Matt's got the Liberty here, which they've just finished getting all set up. It actually looks really nice for a Liberty. Whoa. Right. I, I'm sorry, I, did, I didn't mean anything <laughs> by that. Matt is also airing down to 14 PSI. We've decided this is the number. It feels like it's gonna be very cold out here today because just down here at the bottom of the mountain, this slight little breeze yeah. is feeling like ice hitting your face. It's got some chill to it. And you, it, you can hear the trees. Yeah. Yeah. There's some wind up there. They're saying bundle up. There, up. I'm just gonna long. look at our information that we have on the tablet and just explore. These, there's a lot of roads that kind of zigzag and crisscross up and down mountains and stuff out here. And I've spent very little time in the Olympic Peninsula so I figured it'd be a perfect time to just come check it out. So we're exploring, but we just kind of ended up back on a paved road here. So <laughs> yeah, there's cars coming and everything. That's random. So we're gonna do a little uh, a little mapping here. Bust out the tab. Bust out the tablet, make some decisions. Yeah. So we're gonna end up running out of places we can go. Like it's gonna go all the way down here, but that'll be like it. That's our only options. And it looks like this might be paved all the way up. So what I'm thinking is that we turn around and instead of going back up into here, we just keep going down deeper and deeper into here. Vroom, vroom, vroom. My gas stop, man. What are you laughing about? The occasional fallen tree on the trail isn't going to stop us, but it does mean there's likely no one else in the area in front of us. A bonus. One fallen tree in the way. Just cut it down real quick and we're going to see where this road goes. We found ourselves a nice camp spot. We got right to work. Uh, Setting us up a fire because Go ahead, bud, talk to me. it's cold. As you can see, it's snowing. So that winter storm warning we were talking about earlier was not a joke. It is, uh, it's getting windy, snow's starting to stick, it's starting to snow heavy. So we're taking uh, some refuge under this awning over here. We've got the propane fire pit out because all the wood is too wet around here. We can't really get a fire going. <laughs> Fail on that front, but uh, we're doing good. We're doing good over here. Forecast, snow. Well, we woke up to a little bit nicer weather this morning. There's a little bit of blue sky peeking through. It stopped blizzarding, which is appreciated. We're gonna get packed up and head out of here. I didn't film as much as I would have liked here, but uh, been having so much fun hanging out with Nate and Matt that we just uh, we just chilled last night and tried to stay warm out of the out of the cold. But uh, you know what I'm thinking? You want to just come back to Canada with me? I do. I really do. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> we'll see you in Canada. Guys, make sure you're subscribed. You're not going to want to miss what me and Nate get up to in Canada next week.